were you in February of 1990? Some of you weren't born yet. All of you were in a very different life situation. I was the priest at a large church outside Chicago. My son was nine years old. My daughter was six years old. And my wife was fabulous. <laughs> Where were you in February of 1990? Something important happened that month. It happened pretty far away from here. I learned about it in a book written by someone from Ithaca, New York. He taught at Cornell University, and his name was Carl Sagan. He wrote this. In February of 1990, the spacecraft Voyager 1 photographed the planets of our solar system from beyond the orbits of Neptune and Pluto. From this distance, the planets seemed only points of light. Earth was a pale blue dot. And that's what he called his book, Pale Blue Dot. In the book, he writes about what we have learned about our solar system. And it's amazing how much human beings have been able to learn over the past couple of thousand years. You know, we are such a mixed bag. We can be destructive and terrible and selfish and warlike, and yet we can also be smart and wise and kind and peaceful. We are a real mixture. Our learning ability has been nothing short of amazing. Our understanding of the universe and of life on earth is light years beyond the understanding of the Bronze Age people who wrote the texts that make up our Bibles. We have much, much more knowledge than they did. But we might not have more wisdom than they did. We need both knowledge and wisdom, and wisdom is more important. Wisdom is the way we use our knowledge. I've spoken before about wisdom literature in the Bible. There are some Bible books which are categorized as wisdom books or wisdom literature. The book of Proverbs is one of those books. And we just heard a section from the book of Proverbs in which wisdom is personified. She, and it is a she, she speaks of herself as the first one to be created. In other passages of wisdom literature, Sophia, that's her name in the Greek translations, Sophia is almost divine. Some scholars talk about the divine Sophia as the wise and feminine face of God. Jesus was a wisdom teacher in addition to everything else that he was. And in the text we just heard from John's Gospel, he tells us, that the spirit of truth will continue to guide us into more truth. We don't yet have it all. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. This is what theologians call progressive revelation. The idea that truth, with a capital T, is not something we arrive at, but something toward which we continue to grow. I do love the openness in the Episcopal Church to this idea of wisdom. We continue to think and study and wrestle and grow. Sometimes we have to let go of ideas that used to seem true, but now don't seem to be quite right. Just a couple of weeks ago, I reminded you of how our brand of Christianity looks not only to Scripture, but also to tradition and reason. I mentioned the Anglican tripod, Scripture, tradition, and reason. At our best, we are a thoughtful church. Now, in that book I just mentioned by Carl Sagan, Pale Blue Dot, he also wrote these interesting words. In some respects, science has far surpassed religion in delivering awe. 
How is it that hardly any major religion has looked at science and concluded, this is better than we thought? The universe is much bigger than our prophets said, grander, more subtle, more elegant. God must be even greater than we dreamed. Instead, they say, no, 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 my God is a little God, and I want him to stay that way. A religion old or new that stressed the magnificence of the universe as revealed by modern science might be able to draw forth reserves of reverence and awe hardly tapped by the conventional faiths. Sooner or later, such a religion will emerge. Well, must be Carl Sagan never checked out an Episcopal church because his words describe exactly how I have experienced this particular church, one which honors science and reason as it honors scripture and tradition. I think we honor a big God, a God who created an amazing diversity of worlds and creatures and people. And I think we are trying to create and maintain a big church, a church which hopes to include the diversity of people God created. That's my view anyway. Jesus implied that our search for truth is not a once-for-all deal, but a continuing journey of growth and discovery guided by his spirit of love and compassion. The wisdom literature in the Bible, including the book of Proverbs, calls us to that continuing journey of growth and discovery, guided by the wise woman, Sophia. Instead of a small-minded, narrow, exclusionary kind of religion, I'm interested in a broad-minded, welcoming, intelligent, and inclusive style of religion. Or, to put it more simply, big God, big universe, big church. And I know that some of you share my commitment. I got a wonderful note this past week from a member of St. Mark's talking about why she likes having her children here. It was triggered when one of her kids was exposed to a very conservative and literalistic brand of Christianity. And this is what she wrote to me. We warned our child that many other religious leaders, especially in other regions of the country, teach that being gay is a sin against God, and they teach people not to accept science or think for themselves. We told her that we chose St. Mark's because the teachings here are in alignment with our beliefs and what we are looking for. These include being kind, doing what is right, and serving others. Well, this wise mother made my day and my week with her note outlining the gratitude she feels for the way our church family thinks and teaches and behaves. So I hope your God is a big God, as we have discovered our universe to be a big universe. And I hope your church is a big church, celebrating all the variety our big God has created. Now, I'm not saying that I've got this all together all the time. And I'm not saying that our church has this all together all the time. But this is our vision. And it's older than modern science. We can trace it back to Jesus, the wisdom teacher. And we can trace it back to Sophia, the wise woman of the book of Proverbs. Big God, big church. Big universe, I'm in.